Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Shabbat Service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today. And for those who will listen in later on the archives as well, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, this is the recording for Saturday, May 11th, 2024 on the Gregorian calendar and in the Hebrew calendar year of 5784. It is the month of IR, the third day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I just want to also mention in the official Omer account, the biblical Omer account, we are on day 18 also. The upcoming week, we have Mother's Day on the 12th. Uh, Also, this week, we are observing two Israeli holidays, Yom Hazakaran and Yom Ha'atzmaut. Um, the Israeli Memorial Day, and also is Israeli Independence Day. We are continuing our Bible study in both the NASB version, which are, is the main Bible study that we're involved in, and also the Tanakh, one of the additional Bible studies. We will be reading the same passages, and we will be reading Joshua chapters 1 through 12. Now, the other additional Bible study, which is the Passion Translation, we will be reading Acts chapters 15 to 28. Tuesday evening, we meet live in real time on our free conference call.com channel, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is pretty much um, all the announcements I have for this upcoming week. So we will open with our opening prayer. Avina Malkina, our Father, our King, we want to thank you for the ability to be here together, to be in your presence, to rest in your presence. This is Shabbat. This is the day of rest. And this is the day that you declared as holy. Father God, we are here to honor you. We ask your Holy Spirit to come lead us, guide us. Open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart that we may be receptive to what we're hearing. Show us what it is that we need to grasp and incorporate into our spirit and our walk with you. Give us fresh revelation. We just thank you for your guidance. Father God, we thank you for everything you do. We honor you. We worship you. We adore you. We praise you. And all of our praises go to you. Our glory goes to you. And we pray this prayer in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. It says, Remember, Yom Shabbat, to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai, your God. In it you shall not do any work, not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, this sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Thus that and I blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. Say with me now the Lord's greatest commandment. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivud Nakuto Leolam Ad. Here, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Blessed is the name of, of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love Adonai, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Find them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as frontlets between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And Yeshua stated, the second greatest commandment is this. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And the standing prayer, standing before God, is the is also known as the Amidah. We are going to say three of the blessings, the first one being the patriarch. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. The great, mighty, and awesome God, God most high. He bestows loving kindness and creates all who remembers the kindnesses 
of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their descendants for the sake of his name. In love, King Helper, Savior, and Shield. Blessed are you, Adonai, Shield of Abraham. And the second blessing is God's might. You're mighty forever, Lord, giving life to the dead. Great is your saving power. He sustains the living with steadfast love and with great compassion gives life to the dead. He upholds the fallen, heals the sick, sets the captives free, and keeps faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, master of might, and who can compare with you? O king, who brings death, restores life, and causes salvation to flourish? You are faithful to revive the dead. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives life to the dead. And the third blessing is Kedusha, and that means holiness. You are holy, and your name is holy, and holy ones praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. Machavu, how lovely. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, and your dwellings, O Israel. Because of your great loving kindness, I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Adonai, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. As for me, I will bow and worship. I will kneel before Adonai, my maker. As for me, my prayer to you, Adonai, is for a time of favor. O oh God, in your great love, answer me with the truth of your salvation. In its Chaim, the tree of life declaration, we say this of the Torah. It is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and happy are those who point to it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are shalom. Bring us back to you, Adonai, and we will return. Renew our days as of old, by young Hafu in that day. And it is said, Adonai will then be king over all the earth. In that day, Adonai will be a Kad, and his name, a Kad. And a Kad means one, and that's E C H A D, means one or a composite oneness. May God's great name be magnified and sanctified, Amen, in the world that he created by his will. And may he establish his kingdom, cause salvation to sprout, and may he bring the Messiah closer, Amen, in your lifetime and in your days, and within the lifetime of the entire house of Israel, speedily and soon, and say, Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever, blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, uplifted and lauded, be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is beyond all blessing and song, praise and consolation spoken in the world, and say, Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all Israel, and say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his heights make peace upon us and upon Israel, and say, Amen. The Blessing of Messiah. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melaka Olam, Asher Naten Lanu Dvar HaKayim, Mashiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the Universe, who has given us the word of life, Messiah Yeshua. Stay with me now, Messiah's prayer. Our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And in the ancient days, the high priest known as the Kohen Gadol sounded the shofar to gather Benaiah Israel to worship. We're going to sound a shofar now. In a moment, I am going to pause it for you to listen to praise and worship. If you've been following our ministry for any length of time, you know we do not incorporate music in these recordings. When we begin to come online with recordings, there were so many issues that were going on on various platforms, and people were losing their platforms for multiple reasons, and one of them was music. Now, we know since that time, they have relented somewhat, and people are Again, incorporating music into the recordings with a disclaimer. We just chose to, to continue to do what we're doing. 
And what I usually do is, I, and it is a lot of posts, I know, because I do the postings. So yes, there is, there is a lot of posting that goes on on all the platforms. Um, but there's a reason why we do it the way that we do it. So I post to MeWe, I post to USA.life, I post to Facebook and Gab. Then I have a, a, an email group that I give the full service to. So there's a lot of posting, like I said, that does go on. Um, what I usually do is I'll post the scriptures. I will post a series of songs which are suggested for part one. And then I will post part one and part two of the recording for Shabbat service for both YouTube and Rumble. And then another series of songs, which are suggestions for part two. Now you can listen to all or some, or if you have your own praise and worship that you prefer to listen to when we take a pause for praise and worship, that's fine. Um, one of the reasons why I, I continue to post the way that I do, um, I could certainly make life a lot easier and less posts and I'd be done in no time if I did it that way. Um, but just to make mention in my post uh, of a song and who the artist is, does not give credit to the artist. And so this is why I do it the way that I do. So, I mean, if I'm suggesting a song for you to listen to, then I'm going to post from the artist's YouTube channel. So you get redirected to that YouTube channel and that that artist actually gets credit for your view because it is their music and credit needs to go where credit is due. So, it you know, and many of them, this is their calling for the kingdom. So we want to get behind them and support them in any way that we can. And this is a very simple way that you can support any of the musicians out there. So that's the reason why I'm continuing continuing to do it the way that I do. And I realized, yes, it's a lot of posts. Believe me, I'm the one posting. So yes, um, this is why I'm, I'm doing it that way. So what I'm going to say too, is when you're on the individual YouTube channels, there's many, many of them have more than just one song. So, you know, if you want to listen to other songs, that's fine. Um, also, I'm sure the artists would appreciate that. Also, most of them have hyperlinks uh, to where you can be redirected to either their website or another site where you can purchase their music. If you can support them in that manner, please do. Also, many of them do have ministries because uh, they're praise and worship leaders. So they're out, they're out there doing ministries too. Um, so check out what they have. If you can support them with donations to keep them going with what they're doing, please support them in any way that you can, because they're doing a really important work for the kingdom. Praise and worship is one of the most important elements of any service. We, we were created to praise and worship the creator, something that we'll be doing in eternity. So yes, it is very important. So with that being said, I'm going to pause it for, for you to listen to praise and worship. When you're ready, uh, hit play then. And we will continue on with the Torah and the half Torah portion for this week. And that will be part one. Okay, this week it's Parashat Kedashim, which means holy. And we are going to be reading from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 1 to chapter 20, verse 27. So it is not a very long Torah portion this week. Um, on a non leap year, many times it is paired off with Akari Mot. Uh, there, there's usually a double, double Torah portion, but of course this, this year was a leap year. So we don't have as many double Torah portions as we ordinarily would have on a non leap year in general. Kedashim also, um, translates to saints and the holy ones. Okay, Parashat Kedashim, Holiness Code, chapter 19. And and I spoke to Moses saying, speak to all the congregation of Benai Israel and tell them, you shall be Kedashim, for I, Adonai, your God, am holy. 
each one of you is to respect his mother and father and keep my Shabbatat. I am Adonai, your God. Do not turn to idols or make molten gods for yourselves. I am Adonai, your God. When you bring a sacrifice of fellowship offerings to Adonai, you are to offer it so that you may be accepted. It is to be eaten the same day you offer it and the next day. But if anything remains until the third day, it is to be burned with fire. It is, if it is eaten at all on the third day, it is disgusting. It will not be accepted. Rather, anyone who eats it will bear his iniquity since he has profaned what is holy to Adonai and that soul will be cut off from his people. When you, when you reap the harvest of your land, you are not to reap to the very corners of your field, nor are you to gather the gleanings of your harvest. You are not to pick the remnants of your vineyard, nor are you to gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. Instead, you are to leave them for the poor and for the outsider. I am Adonai, your God. You are not to steal. You are not to lie. You are not to deceive one another. Sounds like good moral ethics there. Yeah. Um, you are not to swear by my name falsely and so profane the name of your God. I am Adonai. You are not to oppress your neighbor nor rob him. The wages of a hired servant are not to remain with you all night until the morning. You are not to curse the deaf nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am Adonai. You are to do no injustice in judgment. You are to you are not to, you are not to be partial towards the poor, nor show favoritism towards the great, but you are to judge your neighbor with fairness. You are not to go up and down as a talebearer among your people. You are not to endanger the life of your neighbor. I am Adonai. You are not to hate your brother in, in your heart. Instead you are to firmly rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. You are not to take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am Adonai. You must keep my statutes. You are not to crossbreed different kinds of animals. You are, are not to sow your field with two kinds of seed, nor are you to wear garment woven of two kinds of material. So no hybrids. If a man lies sexually, with a woman who is a slave girl pledged to be married to another man, but not ransom or given her freedom, they're both to be punished, but they are not to be put to death because she was not free. He is to bring his trespass offering to Adonai, to the entrance of the tent of meeting, a ram for a guilt offering. The Kohen is to make atonement for him with the ram of a trespass offering before Adonai for his sin that he committed, and the sin that he committed will be forgiven him. When you come into the land and have planted all kinds of trees for food, you are to consider their fruit as forbidden. Three years it will be forbidden to you. It is not to be eaten. Then in the fourth year, all its fruit will be holy for giving praise to Adonai. In the fifth year, you may eat its fruit. So it will yield its increase to you. I am Adonai, your God, you are not to eat any meat with the blood still in it, nor are you to use enchantment or practice sorcery. You are not to round off the hair on the sides of your heads, nor are you to mar the edge of your beard. You are not to make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, or make any tattoo marks upon yourself. I am out of mind. Do not defile your daughter to make her a prostitute, so that the land does not fall into prostitution and become full of wickedness. You are to keep my Shabbatot and reverence my sanctuary. I am Adonai. Do not turn to those who are mediums or soothsayers. Do not seek them out to be defiled by them. I am Adonai, your God. You are to rise up in the presence of the gray-haired and honor the presence of the elderly. So you will fear your God. I am Adonai. If an outsider dwells with you in your land, you should do him no wrong. The outsider dwelling among you shall be to you as the native born among you. You shall love him as yourself, for you dwelled as outsiders in the land of Egypt. I am Adonai, your God. You must not be dishonest in judgment and measurements of length, weight, or quantity. You are to have honest balances, honest weights, 
honest bushel measures and honest gallons. I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You must observe all my statutes and all my ordinances. Do them. I am Adonai. And chapter 20, Idols and the Occult were addressed here. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Moreover, you are to tell Benai Israel, anyone from Benai Israel or from, from the outsiders dwelling in Israel who gives any of his children to Molech shall surely be put to death. They were sacrificing to Molech. They were passing their children through the fire. And we can, we can compare this today as the, as the modern abortion institution. It was the same thing. Um, and, and the blood cries out to Adonai. The people of the land are to stone him with rocks. I also will set my face against such a person and will cut him off from among his people because he has given his children a Moloch, defiling my sanctuary and profaning his holy name. Um, actually, um, this, of course, they don't stone people today for, for these things, but uh, that was certainly done back then. So, um, again, because he has given his children a Moloch, defiling my sanctuary and profaning my holy name. But if the people of the land all hide their eyes from that person when he gives of his seed to Moloch and do not put him to death, then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off along with all who play the prostitute with, after him with Moloch. From among their people. The soul that turns to mediums or soothsayers prostituting himself with them, I will set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. So consecrate yourselves and be holy, for I am Adonai, your God. You are to keep my statutes and do them. I am Adonai who sanctifies you. Any man who curses his mother or father shall surely be put to death. He has caused his father or mother. He has cursed his father or mother, and his blood shall be on him. The man who commits adultery with another man's wife, who commits adultery with his friend's wife, both the adulterer and the adulteress, shall surely be put to death. If a man lies with his father's wife and has uncovered his father's nakedness, both of them shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be on them. If a man lies with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have committed a perversion, and their blood shall be on them. If a man lies with if a man lies with a male, as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, and they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be on them. If a man takes a wife and her mother, it is wickedness. They, sh they shall surely be burned with fire, both he and they, so that there may be no wickedness among you. If a man lies with an animal, he shall surely be put to death, and you are to kill the animal. If a woman approaches any animal and lies down with it, you are to kill the woman and the animal. They shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be on them. If a man takes his sister, his father's daughter, and, or his mother's daughter, and sees her nakedness, and she is, it is a shameful thing. They are to be cut off in the sight of the children of their people. For he has uncovered his sister's nakedness, and will bear his iniquity. If a man lies with a woman during her nita and exposes her nakedness, he has exposed her flow, and she has uncovered the flow of her blood. Both of them are to be cut off from among their people. You are not to uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister or your father's sister, for the one who does that has made his close relative naked and will bear his iniquity. If a man lies with his aunt, he has uncovered his uncle's nakedness. They shall surely bear their sin and die childless. If a man takes his brother's wife, it is an impurity. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness, and they will be childless. Now you are to keep all my statutes and all my ordinances and do them, so that the land where I am bringing you to dwell will not vomit you out. You are not to walk in the ways of the nations which I am casting out before you, for they did all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. But I have said to you, you will inherit their land, and I will give it to you to possess it, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am Adonai, your God, who has set you apart from the peoples. Also, you are to make a distinction between the clean animal and the unclean, and between the unclean bird and the, and the clean. And 
you are not to make your souls detestable by, by an animal or by bird or by anything which has the, has the ground teams, which I have set apart as unclean for you. You are to be holy to me, for I, Adonai, am holy and have set you apart from the people so that you would be mine. A man or a woman who is a medium or is a soothsayer shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with rocks and their blood shall be on them. That is the end of our Torah portion for this week. We're going to do a quick recap on that before we go on to the half Torah. Parashat Kedashim, Holy Ones. The beginning of this parashat basically begins with God's command that Israel be holy because God is holy. Since the Hebrew word Kedashim is related to Kadosh, the word for holy, sanctified, or set apart, we understand from the opening verses that a person set aside for the service of God is holy because God is holy. The Hebrew word song, worship song, Hene Kayai, Here is My Life, highlights the deep longing that God places in the hearts of sincere believers to be holy and pleasing to Him. Hene Kayai, Ani Noten Lecha, and that means, Here is my life, I give it to you. Libi Nafshi, my heart, my soul. Asay biat ret sanka, may your will be done in me. Asay oti kadosh, make me holy. And kadosh lepne anaka, an anaka, sorry, uh, holy before your eyes. But what does true holiness really look like? Most people have their own preconceived notions of holiness based on preferences, upbringing, and, and even systems. But this song's line, make me holy before your eyes, spotlights the truth that it is God who makes us holy. Furthermore, it is his standard of holiness that counts, not the world. So we need to be careful about listening to what the world allows, because what the world allows may not line up with what God expects of us as his people. And we read a lot of things that God calls an abomination. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed on, on any of that. So if it was unholy to him in ancient, ancient days, in the Old Testament times, it is still unholy. I mean, it's, a lot of these things are carried on into the Brit Kadashah, the New Testament as well. Um, so he did not abandon um, any uh, any of that. God is not going to be moved and, and you know and change his mind based because we're on the in the 21st century and you know people love being in their sin. Uh, sin is sin to a holy God. It doesn't matter if he has declared it to be sin. It is sin. He's not going to change his mind. Although Paul cautions believers to be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone, and that's Romans chapter 12, verse 17, we must remember that not everyone has a handle on what is holy, since it stems from a relationship with God and a knowledge of his word. So we definitely you know, need to take God's direction, take the direction of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you if you're born again and saved. Holiness. Uh, we are set apart for his purposes. God has made us holy or set apart for his special purposes. Sometimes those special purposes might not be evident to others. For instance, we can imagine that Esther may have experienced some criticism as she prepared to come before the Persian king, even though she was being obedient to her king and to her uncle, who was caring for her like a father. In the eyes of some Jews, she might have looked far from holy, consenting to marry an uncircumcised pagan king, unthinkable for a nice Jewish girl, and yet God placed her in a royal position to save, to save the Jewish people, our ancestors, from destruction. And within those circumstances, she did her best to live up to those purposes. As Messianic Jews, we are, we certainly we are certainly not considered holy by our Orthodox Jewish brethren, but rather um, they frown upon us because we have accepted Yeshua, and we pray for them that uh, those that are still not accepting Yeshua, um, that they learn who he is and accept him. 
Um, ultimately, what is important is not how people see us, but how God sees us. We are each individuals and God treats us as, as such. So let us allow God to make us holy before his eyes. Still, that doesn't mean we are to do our own thing and define for ourselves what holiness looks like. Today's parashat reveals for us how to sanctify ourselves and relate to God's holiness. So the question remains, how can we be holy? Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 9 says, and you shall walk in his ways. And that's the key in those words. We are to emulate the actions and character of God just as he is merciful. We are to be merciful. As he is patient, kind, and forgiving, so are we to be. Yeshua emphasized this guiding principle in his own life. Father God, he's our fa heavenly father, so he is setting an example for us to follow. And, and certainly Yeshua was an example for us. Um, John chapter 5 verse 19 says, Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48 says, it naturally follows then that Yeshua instructed us to also imitate God. Therefore, you are to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And that is what he had said. The original Hebrew word in the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, that is often translated perfect is tamim, T-A-M-I-M, which actually means complete, sound, or blameless. As the psalmist David wrote, I will be careful to lead a blameless life. Derek Tamim, when will you come to me? I will conduct the affairs of my house with a blameless heart. And that's Psalm 101, second verse. In the Hebrew, therefore, we see the true meaning of this word, which is so often translated perfect. A blameless life, Derek Tamim, and blameless heart, Lev Tam refer to purity well god does not expect us to be perfect as we define it to get everything right the first time and every time because we're, we're living in this fleshly body that's that's he knows that it's almost impossible for us to be perfect that's why he sent us a perfect savior to save us he does not want he does not want us to walk in ways along past he wants us i'm sorry to walk in paths of purity and holiness with a pure heart. Our intentions to do so, definitely. The Torah portion reveals that such purity naturally embraces integrity and rejects deceptiveness. You shall not steal, shall not lie, do not deceive one another. That sounds like a really good thing to not you know, be doing these things. In our world today, how many people deceive one another, lie, steal? Um, we don't want to be participants in any of that. Um, that actually doesn't allow for any of us to trust anyone either. If, if, if you're being lied to, deceiving, um, what a crazy world um, or community that would be for us to be living in. However, we do live in a crazy world where those things do happen, and we see them all the time. But we, as a community of God, we need to be set apart and holy to God, and not participating like the rest of the world is. Psalm 101, verses 6 to 7, my eyes will be on the faithful and the land that they may dwell with me. The one whose walk is blameless will serve me. No one will practice no one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. So there it is. I mean, that is actually sinning, and sin cannot stand before a holy God. Of course, this includes holiness and integrity and commerce. The people of God are not to follow the immoral or unjust codes of those who do not know God, but rather to deal honestly in all business affairs, and that, it, that was seen in what we read in Leviticus 19, verses 35 to 36. As believers, we should be especially careful not to deal deceitfully, deceitfully with others. We need to be honest. To do, 
to be, to be deceitful is damaging not only to our personal reputation, but also that of Adonai who we represent. If you're born again and saved, you're representing the kingdom of God. So no, we don't want to be deceitful. We don't want to be uh, deceiving uh, our fellow brothers and sisters, or even those that are that don't know God yet. Um, we need to we need to exemplify who we represent, and we represent the kingdom of God. And if we don't, it you know it's it's not it's unholy actually. Uh, most of us expect that religiously observant people will conduct themselves with a higher standard of morality and integrity than secular people who, without God's laws as a guide, but such is not always the case. And we see that, unfortunately, as well. Sometimes people are con artists pretending to be religious in order to gain another's trust. And that can actually be confusing to those that are actually speaking God. And then they come across these um, these people that are pretending they're not they're not real they're not the real deal, and that is really, you know, it, it, it kind of gives those of us that are really the real deal, you know, it it it, it causes them to not trust, and that has happened. Not too long ago, um, actually. We've seen um, evangelists actually being crooked, uh, and it, it actually gave a really bad name for evangelists, and it, it, it's really, it's really kind of sad. So we need to be really careful, um, and we, as a body and Messiah, need to exemplify who we truly are in Yeshua, and we need to we need to show that to the world because the world is watching. Um, also, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 13 says, do not defraud or rob your neighbor. So, of course, that's something that we should not be doing. Um, we are to be set apart and holy for God. Holiness is love in action. The, this Torah portion also provides other actions that are in keeping with holiness, such as keeping the Sabbath reverencing God's sanctuary, showing respect for the elderly, honoring uh, honoring one's parents, providing for the poor, and not showing favoritism to the rich. It forbids sexual immorality, which was addressed in all aspects, um, injustice, and participating in any kind of sorcery, divination, magic, or witchcraft. Although interest in the occult is on the rise, on the rise, scripture does forbid it. And, you know, um, unfortunately, people are seeking, um, we are a spirit, we are spirit beings and, and people are seeking, but they're, they're going the wrong direction because uh, they're dealing with familiar spirit. The only spirit we should be having is the Ruach HaKadosh within us. That's it. So, um, this Torah portion also reveals that, that holiness is not limited to actions, but also concerns attitude. It condemns hatred, bearing grudges, and taking revenge. Of course, the last part of the above verse um, that I'm going to read, do not hate a fellow Israelite in your heart, rebuke your neighbor, frankly, so you will not share in their guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. So, Yeshua quoted that same verse when questioned as to which commandments were the most important in the entire Torah. He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. That was the second greatest commandment. We just said that earlier um, after we um, recited the Shema, the Lord's greatest commandment. So, as followers of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, we should make every effort to live our lives with integrity, operating in justice, mercy, and love, holiness that is defined um, in this parasha so that we may bring glory to the name of God. 
And this is obviously a crucial issue since Hebrew, Hebrews reminds us, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy without holiness. No one will see the Lord. And that's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. And in 2 Corinthians um, chapter 6, verse 18, we see the secret to holiness is not in attending to our outward appearance, but in drawing closer to the Lord and seeking an intimate relationship with him. That is how we discover who he is, as well as our true identity as the sons and daughters of the Lord Almighty. So we're going to move into the Haftorah. We are going to start with the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verses 1 to 44. Rebellion and return on the tenth day of the fifth month of the seventh year. Some of the elders of Israel came to seek Adonai. They sat before me. The word of Adonai came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the elders of Israel. Say to them, Thus says Adonai Elohim, have you come to inquire of me as I live? It is a declaration of that, and I, I will not be inquired of by you. Will you judge them, son of man? Will you judge them? Make them know the detestable practices of their fathers. Say to them, this says Adonai Elohim, on the day I chose Israel, says Adonai Elohim, on the day that I chose Israel, I lifted up my hand to the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known to them in the land of Egypt. I lifted up my hand to them, saying, I am Adonai, your God. On that day, I lifted up my hand to them to bring them out of the land of Egypt into a land that I had sought out for them, flowing with milk and honey, the splendor of all lands. I said to them, each of you must throw away every detestable thing from his eyes and not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am Adonai, your God. But they rebelled against me and were unwilling to listen to me. None of them cast away the detestable things that were before their eyes, nor did they forsake the idols of Egypt. So I resolved to pour out my fury upon them and spend my anger upon them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I acted for the sake of my name to keep it from being profaned in the eyes of the nations where they were in whose sight I made myself known to them to bring them out of the land of Egypt. So I led them out from the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. I gave them my laws and taught them my judgments, which if a man does, he will live by them. I also gave them my Shabbatot as a sign between me and them so that they would know that I am Adonai who made them holy. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not walk in my statutes. They rejected my judgments which if a man does, he will live by them. They greatly profane my Shabbatot. Then I resolved to pour out my fury on them in the wilderness to consume them. But for the sake of my name, I did what would keep it from being profaned in the eyes of the nations in whom, whose sight I had brought them out. Yet I also lifted my hand to them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them flowing with milk and honey, which is the splendor of all lands. For they rejected my laws, did not walk in my rulings, and profaned my Shabbatot, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, my eye spared them from destruction, so I did not make a full end of them in the wilderness. I said to their children in the wilderness, Do not walk in the statutes of your fathers. Do not keep their ordinances. Do not defile yourself with their idols. I am Adonai, your God, walk in my statutes. Keep my ordinances and do them. Keep my Shabbatot holy, so they will be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am Adonai, your God. But the children rebelled against me. They did not walk in my statutes. They did not keep my ordinances to do them, which if a man does, he will live by them. They profane my Shabbatot. Then I resolved to pour out my fury on them, to expend my anger on them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withheld my hand. For the sake of my name, I did what would keep it from being profaned in the eyes of the nations in whose sight I had brought them out. I also lifted up my hand to them in the wilderness to scatter them among the nations and disperse them through the, the countries. For they had not obeyed my ordinances 
and had rejected my statutes and profaned my Shabbatot. Their eyes went after their father's idols. I also gave them statutes that were not good, that were not good ordinances by which they could live. I let them become polluted in their own gifts. When they offered up all that, opened the womb to pass through their through the fire, so that I might make them desolate, so they would know that I am Adonai. Therefore, son of man, speak to the house of Israel and say to them, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Again, your fathers have blasphemed me in that they dealt faithlessly with me. When I brought them into the land, which I lifted up my hand to give it to them, they saw every high hill and every leafy tree. There they slaughtered their sacrifices and presented their offensive offering. There they made their soothing aroma and poured out their drink offerings. So I asked them, what is the high place where you are going? So the name of it is called Barna to this day. Therefore, I say to the house of Israel, thus says Adonai Elohim, will you pollute yourselves after the manner of your fathers and will after their abominations? When offering your gifts, making yourselves pass through the fire, you keep polluting yourselves with all your idols up to this day. So should I be inquired of by you, house of Israel, as I live? It is a declaration of Adonai. I will not be inquired of by you. What comes up in your mind will not happen at all when you say, let us be like the nations, like the families of, of the countries worshiping wood and stone. As I live, it is a declaration of Adonai, surely with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with fury poured out, I will be king over you. I will bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you are scattered with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm, with fury poured out. I will bring you into the wilderness of the peoples. I will judge you there face to face, just as I judge your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So I will judge you. It is a declaration of Adonai. I will make you pass under the rod and bring you into the bond of the covenant. I will purge out the rebels from among you and those who transgress against me. I will bring them out from the land where they dwell, but they will not enter the land of Israel. So you will know that I am Adonai. As for you, house of Israel, Thus is the Adonai Elohim, go on serving your idols, all of you. Yet afterwards, you will surely listen to me. My holy name you will no longer profane with your gifts and your idols. For in my holy mountain, Israel's high mountain, it is a declaration of Adonai. There the whole house of Israel, all of them will serve me in the land. There I will take pleasure in them. There I will receive your offerings, the first of your gifts, with all your holy things. With your sweet aroma, I will accept you when I bring you out from the peoples and gather you from the countries where you have been scattered. I will be sanctified in you, and in the sight of the nations, you will know that I am at an eye when I bring you into the land of Israel, into the country where I lifted up my hand to give it to your fathers. There you will remember your ways and all your deeds. By which you defiled yourselves, you will loathe yourselves for all your evil that you have done. Then you will know that I am at an eye when I deal with you for my name's sake and not according to your evil ways and your corrupt deeds, house of Israel. It is a declaration of Adonai. And the second reading is from Ezekiel chapter 22 Blood and Injustice. The word of Adonai came to me saying, you, son of man, will you judge? Will you judge the bloody city? So explain to her all her abominations. Now, we know that, you know, everything that was um, given in the Torah to the people, here we fast forward and Ezekiel is addressing uh, addressing the people because obviously they had broken uh, everything that they had agreed to do. They had gone against the Torah. They were doing the very things that Adonai had told them in, in, in the portion of the Torah that we have read, they're, they're doing the very things that they were told not to do. And they're worshiping idols, they're, they're passing their, their children through the fire, uh, they're worshiping high places, they're, 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 not, they're worshiping all kinds of idols and gods and what have you. 
which has actually uh, angered the Lord. And but again, you can you can hear from the the last portions that there is redemption there, there is mercy there, and He's willing to give them mercy. He's willing to bring them out um, and purge the wickedness from from among them, the, the ones that are like the ringleaders and, and doing these things. Um, but he's willing to give them a path to return to him and then he will bless them. Okay. So now we're on chapter 22. The word of Adonai came to me saying, you son of man, will you judge? Will you judge the bloody city? So explain to her all her abominations. Say, thus says Adonai Elohim, the city that spills blood in her midst and makes idols for herself that defile her, time has come. You'll become guilty in your blood that you have spilled and are defiled by your idols that you have made. So you have brought your days near and have come up to your years. Therefore, I've made you a disgrace to the nations and a mockery to all the lands. Those near and far from you will mock you with a defiled name and full of turmoil. Behold, each prince of Israel has used his own armed strength in you to shed blood. Father and mother have been treated with contempt. The outsider has been oppressed in your midst. The orphan and the widow have been mistreated in you. So again, that went against um, what what we read in the Torah. They had already they had already um, slipped and backslid and were doing these very things. You have despised my holy things and profaned my shabbat. Slanderous men are you in order to shed blood. They have eaten at the mountain shrines they commit immoral acts in your midst they have uncovered their father's nakedness in you they violate women that are in need of within you and one has been detestable with his neighbor's wife another has wickedly defiled his daughter-in-law yet another has violated his sister his father's daughter in you they accept bribes in order to shed blood in you you have taken usurious interest and you have greedily gained by oppressing your neighbors, and you have forgotten me. So they're not dealing justly with one another, in, in, in other words. It is a declaration of Adonai. Now, look, I clap my hands at your dishonest gain that you have made, and at your bloodshed, at the bloodshed at your, at your midst. Will your heart's courage stand, or your hands be strong in the days when I deal with you? I, Adonai, have spoken it and will do it. I will scatter you among the nations and disperse you throughout the land. I will purge your uncleanness from you. You will be defiled in the sight of the nations. Then you will know that I am Adonai. The word of Adonai came to me saying, Son of man, the house of Israel has become dross to me. All of them are the copper tin, iron and lead left inside a furnace. They are the dross of silver. Therefore, thus does Adonai Elohim, both you have all become droves, therefore, and be therefore behold, I will gather you into Jerusalem as one gathers silver, copper, iron, lead, and tin into the furnace to blow the fire upon it to melt it. So I will gather you in my anger and in my fury. I will put in you, I will put in you and melt you. I will gather you and blow the fire of my wrath upon you so you may be melted in the midst of it as silver it melted in the furnace. So you so will you be melted within it. So you will know that I, Adonai, have poured out my fury on you. The word of Adonai came to me saying, Son of man, say to her, you are a land that is not cleansed or rained upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in her midst, like a roaring lion turned prey. They have devoured lives. They have taken wealth and valuables. They multiply widows in her midst. Her Kohanim have done violence to my Torah and have profaned my holy things. They have made no distinction between the holy and the profane, nor have they taught the difference between the unclean and clean. They shut their eyes to my Shabbatah, so I am profaned among them. Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing at prey, spilling blood and destroying lives for dishonest gain. Her prophets have plastered them with whitewash seeing false vision and predicting lies to them, saying, Thus says Adonai Elohim, when Adonai has not spoken, no one in the breach. This is the last segment here in this, in this reading. The people of the land have oppressively blackmailed, plundered in robbery, 
wrong the poor and needy and abuse the outsider unjustly. I searched for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand in the breach before me for the land so that I would not destroy it, but I found no one. Therefore, I have poured out my fury on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. I have brought their own way upon their heads. It is a declaration of Adonai. And the final reading is from the book of Amos, from the prophet Amos, chapter 9, verses 1 to 15. Now escaping his eyes, I saw my Lord standing by the altar, and he said, Strike the tops of the pillars so the porches shake. Break all of them off at the head. Then the last of them I will slay with a sword. None of them fleeing will escape, and no fugitive will slip away. If they should dig down to Sheol, from there my hand will take them. If they go up to heaven, from there will I bring them down. If they should hide themselves at the top of Carmel, I will search them out and take them from there. If they hide themselves from my eyes at the bottom of the sea, from there I will command the sea serpent to bite them. If they should go into captivity before their enemies, from there I command the sword to slay them. I will set my eyes upon them for calamity and not for prosperity. My Lord is that, and I said, oh, it is he who touches the land. So it melts, and all its inhabitants will mourn. Then it will surge like all the Nile, and sink again like the Nile of Egypt. He who builds his upper stories in heaven fitted its vault over the earth. He who summons the waters of the sea and pours them out. On the face of the earth, Adonai is his name. Are you not like the children of the Cushites to me, Benai Israel? It is the declaration of Adonai. Did I not bring Israel up from the land of Egypt, the Philippines from Captor? I mean, the Philistines from Captor and Aram from Kerr? Behold, the eyes of my Lord Adonai are on the sinful kingdom, so I will utterly destroy it from the face of the earth. Nevertheless, I will not annihilate the house of Jacob. It is a declaration of Adonai, for behold, I have commanded, and I will shake the house of Israel among all the nations, like grain being tossed in a sieve, without a pebble falling to the ground. By the sword shall all the sinners of my people die, those who stay. The calamity will not overtake or confront us. David Suka restored. In that day, I will raise up David's fallen sukkah. I will restore its breaches, raise up its ruins, and rebuild it as in days of old, so they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations called by my name. It is a declaration of Adonai, the one who will do this. Behold, days are, come, are soon coming. It is a declaration of Adonai, when the plowman will overtake the reaper, the one treading grapes, the one sowing seed, the mountains will drip sweet wine, and all, and all the hills will melt over. Yes, I will restore the captivity of my people Israel. They will rebuild desolated cities and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will also make gardens and eat their fruit. Yes, I will plant them on their land, and they will never again be plucked up out of their land that I have given to them. I don't know, your God has said it. So, yes, Israel is restored as of 1948, and they will never again be plucked out of their land. Amen. Amen. Um, and you can see, even in the book of Amos, uh, everything that they have done wrong and um, was brought up, how, how Adonai was dealing with it. But then at the end of that chapter, we see God's mercy on his people, and then he would bring them back. Uh, replenish things, replenish things, you know, make them fruitful in the land, and they will never be plucked plucked from their land again. Um, and that's that we see with Amos as well. So just to recap um, from the Torah portion, Kedashim means holy ones or saints. And this parsha begins with the statement, you shall be holy for I the Lord your God and holy. This is followed by a dozen of mitzvot. 
uh, divine commandments through which uh, which we are sanctified, you know, our ancestors were sanctified uh, and related to the holiness of God. These include the prohibition against idolatry, the mitzvah of charity, the principle of equality before the law, Shabbat, um, you know, keeping Shabbat holy, uh, sexual morality, honesty in business, honor and awe of one's parents and el the elderly, and the sacredness of life. Also in, in Kedashim, um, actually to love your neighbor as yourself was also uh, something that was stated. And actually Yeshua taught on that. And just a, a reminder, Yeshua taught from the Old Testament scrolls, as did the disciples, because the New Testament wasn't even wasn't written when Yeshua uh, was present. It was actually happening real and in live, you know, live and in real time, actually. And it wasn't recorded until later. And the half to our portion, also I mentioned um, Amos. We can see where uh, the people were had backslid well actually they committed sins um and pretty much in, in in both of the readings of ezekiel the same thing but how god god is so loving and so merciful that you know he also stated at the very end that he would bring them back uh if, if they were seeking him truly seeking him he would bring them back and you know he would if they would return to, to, to him, he would return to them and bless them in their land. So that is b the basis for for all of what we've read in the half twelve portion. Um, it mentions God's God's repeated enjoinders to observe the commandments to keep the Shabbat for the people to not get into idol worship, uh, and and it reflects. This week's Torah portion, which discuss, discusses the many commandments, and actually Adonai uh, points out everything that the people have actually disobeyed. So this is why they were exiled and uh, why he unleashed his fury on them. The prophet Ezekiel transmitted God's message, reminding the Jews how he chose them as a nation how he took them out of Egypt and promised to take them to the Holy Land. In Egypt, God dispatched a prophet who exhorted the Jews to abandon their idols, yet they did not do so, and he, he then gave them laws and statutes, including that of the observance of Shabbat as a sign between him and his people. But the house of Israel, of course, rebelled uh, in the wilderness. They, walked, they did not walk in the statutes, just despised the ordinances, um, which it he says, if a man keeps, he will live through them and my Sabbath. They desecrated exceedingly. The prophet goes on to mention God's punishment that, that occurred. And namely, they did not enter the Holy Land. And, and then he admonished the children not to follow their father's ways, but to observe the laws and to sanctify the Shabbat and all the commandments that were given. And then went on to say they did not do so. And they were dealt with as well and um but also again the mercy of god if the people return to him and he he prophesied that they would that and they do uh, that he would restore them restore them to their land and he would continue to be their god so that is actually the end of part one of Shabbat service. We're going to close out in prayer, take a short break, and then we're going to come back for the second segment of Shabbat. And in the second segment of Shabbat, we are going to read from the Brit Kadashah. We will then do an altar call, and then we will close out Shabbat for the week. Father God, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you for your word. And your expectations of your people are not great, are not out of, out of our reach. I mean, these are to live morally and we don't want to be cheating our neighbor. We don't want to be uh, dishonest and, and doing things against our own brothers and sisters. So absolutely, you know, what you've set before our ancestors was doable. Uh, 
um, yet they backslid, yet they went against against what you had put before them. They followed in the in the footsteps of the world. Father God, we see that happening in our world today, and we pray, we pray that more and more people come to you. We stand in the gap. We we turn to you, Father God. We want to make sure that our hearts are right with you. So we do live in this fleshly body, and you know we're not perfect, and we come to you when we have failed you um, to, for, to for forgiveness, and, and we just love you, Father God, and we know that you're merciful. We know that you're just as well, and you know our failings. You know that we're, we're, we are made of dust. We are, we are living in a fleshly body. This is why you gave us your only begotten son to actually intercede for us because we could not do it ourselves. There is no way that we could redeem ourselves. And we strive to live a holy life. We strive to be set apart from the world. And you know our our misgivings and 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 and, and what we face in this world. And, and we are so grateful that the Holy Spirit lives inside us to guide us, to be that still small voice that says, mm, I I don't think you should be doing that. We thank you, Holy Spirit, and keep us attuned to your guidance. We need that. We need you. Father God, we need you in every minute, every nanosecond of our day, because we live in a world that, as you know, and are not surprised by this, but we do acknowledge that we live in a world that is completely upside down. And yes, we need you in every, 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 every aspect of our lives. And we're so grateful that you are here for us and that you love us and that you gave us your only begotten son to intercede for us, to, to take away our sins so we could be with you. And we're so grateful to you. We honor you. And may everything that we do glorify your holy name. Help us to stay strong in this world that we live in. Give us fresh anointing, fresh refreshment, so that we do not become weary in this battle. We just thank you. And we pray this prayer in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Take a short break and we'll be coming back for part two.